So, we're gonna 3D print a guitar. Now, people have been 3D printing guitars for years, and they've gotten pretty good at it. There's some really cool designs out there that you can download for free and 3D print on your own. But I wanna do something unique. I wanna do something in my style. And I wanna take us on the journey together. So what we're gonna do is start at the very beginning from the design stage, from the stage of inspiration to CAD, to figuring out how we're gonna cut up the guitar to actually fit on the 3D machine, and then to printing. So let's get started. So what I've decided to do is build a Rhodes style 3D printed guitar. This is what I found on the internet, and this is gonna help us copy what we need. All I need to do is trace this body shape. This is what it's gonna look like. And what I wanna do here is I wanna chop off the points. I don't think we need the points. I think they're a little extraneous. And again, we have a very limited space on the print bed. So if we can eliminate all these unnecessary bits, let's do it. Now we gotta do something unique. We have to find something cool to actually do with this guitar. So I came up with this. This was one of the first sort of experiments I've been doing with like generative type design. And I just thought it looked so cool. And I thought, well, let's use this design. So I started doing this kind of stuff. It really tricks the eye into thinking it's more elaborate and complex than it really is. And I thought, this is my look. And here is a render of what I made. I thought it would look cool if there was some kind of lighting system. And then I thought, well, let's take those two designs and then let's offset them. So let's have some negative space between them. And so I came up with this design. And it's essentially the same concept where we have a very complex, elaborate amount of geometry on the front, and then we have a different complex geometry in the back that we can see through. And now this serves two purposes. It looks really cool, but then it also allows us to save on material when we're 3D printing. So the first thing to note is that this body is 42 millimeters thick. Now, if you divide 42 mil by three, that comes out to 14 millimeters. So my top layer, this design is 14 mil, and then the back is also 14 mil. So if I turn this around, these bits here are 14 mil, and then the negative space in between is 14 mil too. So there's a negative space of 14 millimeters right in here. Besides that, what I've also done is I've had some of the design spill over onto the edge. So these sections here are two mil where they spill over onto this edge here. And it just makes it look really cool, really organic. Design is not just in that little window, it spills over. The back has the same design. It spills over to the bottom, but it also spills over to the centerpiece too. And then what I did was to stay away from like sharp 90 degree angles, what I did was I made this control cavity wavy. It's got waves almost everywhere. There's no 90 degree sharp corners, so it doesn't look like a box. And so these are the kind of things that we need to think of when we're designing. We don't want to just have a box there where the human eye actually sees all these cool organic wavy shapes, and then it just sees 90 degree angles. Now, one of the other bits of design that I did was I beveled at the top edge. So this is an entire bevel. So you have all this really cool complex geometry and then you shear that top bevel and now you've created more kind of complexity to it. So the next thing that we need to do is cut this up so that it fits on the plate of the 3D printer. But for me, what I wanted to do was try to find a way to hide those cuts and make them a part of the design. And this is what I landed on. Make these cuts blend in with the design so that when your eye sees them, your eye is not thrown off completely. So for example, the first big cut here, you can see it's a wavy line that follows the actual design of the guitar. So when you look at it, it just doesn't look out of place. The last bit that I had to do was all the holes for the wires. So every guitar needs a bridge ground wire. So there's a bridge ground hole here that goes straight into the humbucker route and then it comes out here and then we have the hole from the humbucker route that goes into the control cavity 
So all that's been designed into the actual geometry of the body. That way it's actually 3D printed. So I've designed a couple of slots for carbon fiber rods. So the first set of carbon fiber rods are going through the neck heel and they extend all the way to the humbucker, something like that. And they're just gonna add a little bit more rigidity for that section. And also because the heel and the main center are two pieces that will also kind of help those two bind together. Now the second set of carbon fiber rods are on the main body and they run underneath the body from the main section all the way back towards the bridge. And these guys will be right there. They're sort of a little bit lower than the carbon fiber rods that are at the heel. So there's sort of like two tiers or two levels of carbon fiber rods running through the guitar. So the next thing that we need to work on is a way for us to ensure that when we glue these pieces together, that they're not sliding around when we add our epoxy. So what I've done is I've created tabs and these tabs will actually insert into the main section into their own pockets here. So there are three holes for the tabs to go into. So we've gone through the design process. We need to take a pause before we continue. We need to know if our parts are gonna fit inside this model. I need to understand how the tolerances work with 3D printing. When we 3D print, how tight is it gonna be? Is there gonna be any slop? Do we have to adjust for that? So I have here the neck heel. What I did was I sliced it this direction because I don't need any of the extra dimensions this way. The pocket is the only part of this I need to actually print to fit my heel in there to determine if it fits. So I actually designed this pocket with about 0.25 millimeters of extra dimension and the heel fit in here very nicely. So this turned out really great. It's also a great indication of how the surface finish is gonna be. I really like how the edges and the points came out nice and sharp and it just came out really lovely. So the next section that we need to test is whether or not my design will actually work. So this design has those two pieces, right? The front that you can see through and the back with a negative space in the middle. So I took a cross section, again, just taking a complex piece of geometry, cutting it up and printing this. And it looks pretty good. Surface finish on the top looks fine. The surface finish that touches the plate looks fine. This is the surface finish that's basically created where the organic supports are touching. And that does not look good. So we need to figure something out. So after several attempts at printing and some fails and some prints that I just didn't quite like the finish surface of, I decided on trying something new that I think is working really well. So in this example, we have this ornament that spills over onto this surface, two millimeters high. And so what's going on here is that it's doing a surface finish on both these elements. 
But what I learned was the surface finish on the bottom always looks better. So what I've done now is I have split the ornament from the main body. This is a good example. So this would be the part that's touching the actual print bed here. And it's got this beautiful surface finish. And so what I do is I split the ornament part. And I put these little tabs here with the according locator holes. And then I'm able to essentially put this on there and then glue it on. And so this is the best finish that I've been able to achieve through all my tests. You can't beat that. So the sidewalls are always really gorgeous. You can't go wrong with the sidewalls. And the actual part that touches the bed is also very nice, which is this part here, because I put it upside down. And then obviously when it does the top, it does a pretty good job. So I can't complain about the top there, but this is really the star of the show. So this was actually the last piece that I printed and it's the perfect one. So everything prior to this isn't as good as this one, which is kind of lame, but this is the first guitar that I've ever printed. So what I'm going to do is start to glue these together. So I'm going to glue this top on right now and I'm going to use five minute epoxy or super glue, just depending on how I feel. And then the, um, the bottom ornament is just on the, on the printer right now, so I'll glue that on. And then once that goes, I have these tabs here and they have corresponding holes and then they just basically go in like this. And so that looks pretty darn killer. So obviously because I printed these slightly differently, this has a different finish than this. And that's something that we're gonna have to work on. We're gonna have to kind of figure out really how to make this all look cohesive. And then these big pieces, this is a big 12 hour print. I'm not gonna redo this. So I can redo this in this fashion, which works really well. And I'll do that on the, the second one. But for this particular model, I'm just gonna keep it as is and we'll figure out what to do with making it look pretty. This guitar came out absolutely killer and I couldn't be happier. And it's one of the fastest guitars I've ever built. And that's because of 3D printers and 3D printing technology. So it was just a whole lot of design work. I spent days and days in bed 
designing. That's where the real work is. A lot of the bulk of this is on the computer. And then a lot of it is just kind of babysitting the 3D printer. Some of these prints had 12 hour prints. Some of them were nine hour prints. So it really just depends on the complexity of the geometry on the part and how big it is. So this came up pretty cool. And what I ended up doing is using five minute epoxy. It's been summer here in Texas and five minute epoxy usually becomes something like one minute epoxy. This is withstanding the actual tension of the strings. So keep in mind that there is a seam here for the heel and the main body. So under string tension, you would think that that would just go pop right off. But this is basically a testament to modern adhesives. Epoxy will do the job and this stays in tune. It's perfectly fine. I have carbon fiber rods in here, four of them. Two running from the heel to the humbucker and another two running across the entire main body. So obviously one of the things that I ran into a huge hurdle was the cohesiveness of the surface finish. Because I printed all these parts differently because I was experimenting in real time, all the parts looked different. They all did. So in order to achieve a cohesiveness visually, what I did was I just painted it. Simple as that. And what I did was I used a very high build texture paint. And I used actually two different types of high build texture paints. And even that wasn't enough. So you do have to sand if you want to get rid of some of these layer lines that are visible. I did not want to. Um, what I need to do now is explore the idea of going in the opposite direction of exploring texture as the surface finish. That way we don't have to worry about super flat, super smooth parts. We go the opposite direction. And that's something I'm going to explore with the next guitar. So one of my biggest takeaways with this entire build is that 3D printed guitars tend to be somewhat of a novelty. And what I've learned was there are certain things that a 3D printer can do that a CNC cannot, that a laser cannot, that it can do better. And what I'm talking about is this idea of impossible geometry, that even a five axis CNC could not do things you could only do with additive printing. But what I learned was it doesn't have to be completely 3D printed you could only print what you needed to and then use mixed materials. So I thought to myself, there's certain things, like I did the cavity cover and I 3D printed it just because the whole guitar is 3D printed. And that's a terrible idea to 3D print something just because the rest of it is 3D printed. But I did that. And I realized that would have been a far easier thing to do on the laser. And I also think about the, the center section. I think, well, there's not really a whole lot of complexity in there. That could be actually CNC'd and made out of wood or something else. So what I want to do next time is incorporate this idea of mixed materials and utilize the strengths of these tools and not necessarily use one tool for the whole job because that's the novelty, right? We clicked on this thumbnail on this video because this says 3D printed guitar. If it was half 3D printed, you probably wouldn't have clicked it and it probably wouldn't have the same impact. I think that's what most people are going for, the impact of an entirely 3D printed guitar. But as a guitar builder and as a guitar player, I realize that what we should be doing is using these tools for their strengths and not because of their novelty or impact. I had a great journey with this guitar and I want to thank you for joining me on it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.